So if you hang around these Bobcat machines long enough, you may have heard the term swash plate sensor, or you might be the unfortunate one who has a swash plate sensor code. Maybe swash plate sensor uh, won't return to neutral or swash plate sensor out of neutral. So, well, number one, what is a swash plate? Why do we have a swash plate sensor? What does it do? How is it controlled? And why are you now getting codes? So what I've done is I've pulled a whole entire pump assembly out of a skid steer. Now these are the SJC machines where you got all joystick controls or only ones that are going to have these style pumps. You're not going to have a swash plate sensor on the manual drive. Now this is how the pump's going to be oriented in your machine. You know we got our gear pump, charge pump over here and then we got our drive pulley over here and then your drive hoses will be coming out of the front of the pump here. These up here are going to be your control solenoids. These are your actual controllers up here. And if you notice on top of the pump, we've got all these plugs and I've painted some red for you and I've painted these green. Now these are going to be important. We're going to talk about these here in a little bit. But where's your swash plate sensor? Well, a lot of times it's found on the bottom of the pump underneath and it's really hard to get to. Um, can you get to your swash plate sensor? without pulling the engine, yeah, you can, and it sucks. You can lift up the front of the um, engine, you know, pull your motor mounts, you can get under here to pull a swash plate sensor out and replace it if you have to. However, it is extremely rare, in my experience, now other techs on other parts of the country may have different experiences than I have, but I've been doing this a long time. I've replaced exactly two swash plate sensors. They're extremely reliable, so just replacing a swash plate sensor may not fix your problem. Now you may hear someone say something about a plastic bushing inside the pump, and that's what we're going to take a look at, is how do you access that plastic bushing? What is the plastic bushing? What goes wrong with it? But first we got to get to it. So me personally, I like to pull the whole engine out because it's just too much trouble to work on this thing inside the machine. Well, you're going to have to pull it out if you're going to split your pump anyways, but don't even bother replacing your swash plate sensor. It could be something in the wiring or anything else. You can adjust the swash plate sensors, but <clears throat> more than likely it is going to be that plastic bushing inside the pump if you've exhausted all other options. So you can try a pump calibration, and I'll go over pump calibration in a different video. And if your pump calibration fails, or if it fails shortly after you recalibrate the pump, then we know it's going to be that plastic bushing. So I'm going to go ahead and I've unbolted the gear pump. We're just going to take the gear pump off and get it out of our way. roll this pump over and now we can see our swash plate sensors this is going to be the right side of the machine as if you were sitting in the machine and of course this side is going to be the left side so let's just go ahead and, and take a look at the right side of the pump so we got to pull the guard off using a 17 millimeter to take the screws off and you're going to have to do get the guard out of the way so you can work on the sensor So I'm going to go ahead and pull the swash plate sensor out so we can take a look at how this works. Well, before I pull the screw all the way out, I want you to see. That we will check the voltage. You can do this with you can back probe the wiring. Um, you know, if you if you don't have you probably don't have the software or access to the software. You can back probe the wiring and we want to get that as close to two volts as possible. But the swash plate sensor is adjustable in this sense. So we want to get that as centered as possible. And it really is difficult to do without the software. But usually what I find is if we center, if we got a good swash plate, you know, connection inside, we center the sensor, you're usually going to be right where you need to be. This swash plate sensor is a really tight fit inside, so it doesn't just fall out. We've got to kind of wiggle this off. Oh, and pop it out. So if we look on the top of this, we can see how it's kind of machined here with some flat ears. And those are going to fit in the bottom of the pump here. This is what drives this swash plate sensor. So this swash plate sensor is mechanical it's a mechanical potentiometer in a sense that you know they've been doing that for many years that this physically turns and that's what changes the voltage inside so before i tear into this any further 
I want to show you the pump controller on this is our new machines the later M series and um, R series that we're not using a mechanical and I've got a video I'll leave a link up here where I did this on an R series um, we have uh, no longer a mechanical swash plate sensor is now a Hall effect sensor. So I don't want to get too sidetracked off the pump we're actually focusing on. I do just want you to see the difference on this. So this is now the swash plate sensor on the new controller. You see there's nothing mechanical on the bottom. It's going to be Hall Effect. It's going to pick up. We pull this top plate off. Maybe. Okay. See right here we can see a magnet. So this is what that's reading is that magnet spinning inside. So I don't know. Yeah, you can see that spinning. Underneath, we got a little bracket here, and that's where our swash plate controller is actually going to be rotating that sensor. So, so that's on the new style pump. So how do we get to that plastic bushing? Well, we're going to have to split the pump apart. And there, there's, there's really not a lot of magic in here. Don't be scared to do this. I'm going to just set this up on a block. So I'm not going to mess with the controller or anything. I'm basically just going to pull this half of the pump off. Uh, we're looking at the back of the pump now. So this essentially is one pump housing with two rotating groups inside. A left hand rotating group and a right hand rotating group. As opposed to like a manual drive pump where it's literally two pumps sandwiched uh, bolted together. So one pump housing, two rotating groups. Now we just got four Allen head bolts to pull this end cap off. And we're going to use a 10 mil. Allen head. Okay, you may have seen that pump housing push off a little bit because we're actually spring loaded on the um, spherical washer that's on top, that's in the rotating group. So that's why the pump pushed back. So it, when, when you're first splitting a pump, it may or may not push back, but even when you're putting it together, just notice that it's not gonna go all the way back together until you put your screws in and pull it back and preload that uh, spring that I'll show you here in a minute. So we're gonna go ahead and remove our whole entire rotating group as one unit. So that's it. You will notice our valve plate in here. This valve plate, you know, is what we're going to inspect. We got a tiny bit of wear down here. We've actually gone through the bronze a little bit. Um, so I'm not real happy with this valve plate, but this valve plate will pop off. Um, right now it's just kind of being held on with the friction of the oil in there. So usually that's not going to fall out and there's nothing else inside this cavity that's going to fall out and give you any issues. So we pulled it out like this. This is my swash plate control arm. See, this thing will spin 360 degrees, but you want to make sure that the, so you got a short and a long part. The long part is how you're going to assemble it. This is what's going to slide back in. And that is controlled. Up here, see this notch in our servo? That's where that piece goes in this notch in the servo. And this big uh, servo right here moves back and forth, and that's what controls our swash plate. Okay, so I don't have to pull this shaft or anything. We've literally got a rotating group right here. These pistons will fall out, so I don't want to pull this apart yet. What we're looking at underneath the slippers here, these are called slippers, and see, that's what rotates on this swash plate. See how I move this swash plate back and forth? That's what gives us our forward and reverse drive. And the more we stroke that swash plate, the more volume we are moving to the motors and the faster the machine is going to drive. Move the swash plate a little bit, a little bit of flow, and the more we move it, the more flow we're going to have in either direction. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pull this rotating group off. Now 
we're going to inspect our slippers here. This is that spherical washer I was telling you about that is uh, spring loaded in there. But we're looking at our slippers here and we're going on to inspect those and make sure there's no uh, scars or scratches or anything in these slippers. That's very important that, um, that all these are in good shape along with the valve plate. See the tiny holes inside these slippers here? That's where hydraulic pressure from this side of the valve actually comes through here. So this is pressurized to this little hole. And that's what allows this slipper to float on top of the swash plate. It's actually got pressure coming out of that hole. And it's called leakage. That's why we have case drain out of this motor because all this uh, pressure coming through these holes to keep these things literally floating on the swash plate, that's just sacrificial fluid that we have to use as internal leakage as case drain to keep everything lubricated and working properly. We pull the slippers out spherical washer we got some pins here that this is what this sits on and there's a big spring inside of here I can't even push it down hardly by hand but that's the spring that we're pressurizing against when we put that case back on so these are a little tough to get back in look right down inside here here's the plastic bushing we're talking about and you see that plastic bushings hooked to this little rod and I'm gonna pull it out where you can see it a little better but watch right here this remember this is the part that our actual sensor goes into so as I move this swash plate see how as I move the swash plate it's actually turning that and that's what's turning our sensor so if this little control rod right here has any play or this plastic bushing has any play in the swash plate, that this isn't going to, you know, if, it, if we try to go back to neutral, you may have some slop in here and the sensor is not going to be back perfectly neutral. So we're going to have to play, replace that bushing. So we can literally just pop our swash plate out. Now we got these half bearings down here. We also got half races. We want to inspect these races and these bearings, but if you're in there, you know, you may or may not want to replace them. All these look good, so I won't necessarily replace them. So here's a little control rod, and we can pull this bearings just on a pin right there that comes out. Here's our control rod that's inside that plastic bushing. So there's a, there's a little bit of play, but not a lot. I don't think that this pump would have a swash plate code just based off what I'm seeing here as far as I think this one's in good shape. But we'll pull this rod out and then we'll have to pull this plastic bushing out. Let's go ahead and rip that out and take a look at it. Get this taken out. See I just pulled that rod out of the swash plate. This one actually is. It should have been a lot tighter than that. I don't know it's pretty snug. So that's it. You got 12 to 15 hours of work to replace this tiny, you know, I don't know, four or five dollar part. Now, when you buy a new bushing, it is the updated bushing. It's a much better material that won't wear out. And as of December of 2017, all machines or all these pumps that came from the factory have the updated bushing. So if you're like a 2018 and up machine, you probably won't have this issue with this plastic bushing, but any machine previous to that are absolutely susceptible to it. Just like my T650 here, this is a 2014 model. A little higher hours, but it is susceptible to this failure. So let's just say we're gonna put our new bushing in. Pop that in. Get our half bearings lined up. Now you notice this little keyhole here on the end. It's going to go down in this holes on either side of the pump. So we got to make sure that that lines up in there and that's what keeps this bearing uh, rotating in place. got to get my key put back in and we're going to lie that up with the swash plate sensor control and 
you know, we just got to play around with it a little bit and make sure these bearings get into the right, get into their races correctly. Okay. There it is. Okay. Now again, this is a little dirty, but before I would put this back together in a real situation, this is all gonna be cleaned and spotless and lubricated. We wanna lubricate it. So now it's it's very difficult to take this whole rotating group assembly and, and turn it over upside down and get it down on that swash plate. Um, and, and of course you don't want our swash plate to fall back out. So we, we can't flip it over and go down on the rotating group. So what I do, I just take a piece of rope or a piece of string or an o-ring or something wrap it around that swash plate you know like that or the rotating group i'm sorry and you just kind of pull a little tension on it and now we can turn this over and see none of those slippers are going to fall out take this down get it lined up right on our swash plate So now that we got our rotating group back together, I just want to make sure that my swash plate feels good, the bearings and all are still lined up. Swash plate control linkage. Remember the long part goes inside the pump, points toward the inside. And then we're just going to line this thing up. I do like the pump to be kind of horizontal. So now that we've inspected everything and we're comfortable putting this back together, all we're gonna do is just slide this right back into place. Slowly going to tighten these back down to pull that pump back down against that preload spring. Now there is a torque spec on these bolts, guten tight. So now that we got that put back together, you know, we were looking at the uh, right side of the pump. It's gonna be completely identical. Same thing on the left side of the pump, just our input shaft is a little bit different than our shaft on the right side, but same process inside there. Now we're gonna get more into, um, you know, setting this pump up if you completely rebuilt it a little bit later. We're just trying to focus on that swash plate sensor, but let's get back to these plugs here that I was telling you about. Once we get the pump all put back in the machine, all the hoses hooked up and everything ready to go, before we start the machine, you got, what we did is when we took these halves off, we drained every drop of oil out of this pump. So what we got to do is we want to refill that pump with oil. So the ones that I painted red, these are the pressure ports for either side of our servo. That's how we're going to balance our servo. So we're not going to mess with that. But these green ports on top, what we want to do is remove one, put a tiny funnel in there. We'll remove the other one and we're just going to fill it up with hydraulic oil through one port until oil comes up out of the second port. And that way we know that our pump is full of oil primed and uh, ready to go. So, so hopefully that helps. You know, that is like the main cause of swash plate return to neutral codes um, is that plastic bushing. And see, it's, it's not complicated. It's not really that hard to change. So if it's something you feel like to, you know, tackle yourself, go for it. Um, you know, you can contact me through uh, the description in the video. You can find out how to contact me. So if you have any questions or concerns or need any help, please contact me and let me know. Uh, thanks for watching.